Here's the argument you commonly hear from so-called creation scientists. It goes something like this. Evolution may have a lot of fossils and a lot of evidence that might lead you to that conclusion, but none of it is decisive. They cannot prove to you beyond a shadow of a shadow of a doubt their entire theory that man is descended from this, that's descended from that, that's descended from this ape, that's descended from this other creature, etc., etc. They can't prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's lots of reasons to question evolution. There are plenty of holes in evolutionary theory. Therefore, my theory is just as valid as theirs. Well, no it's not. And I'm going to tell you why it's not. I do agree with them to the extent that evolution is not a scientific law. There are still legitimate reasons to question evolution. But you see, evolution is not only the best theory we have for the origins of the species, it's actually the only theory we have. You see, a scientific law is something that we just don't doubt anymore, like gravity. It is a scientific law that what goes up must come down, unless, of course, it breaks the gravitational field. If I hold this shoehorn up, for example, the force of my thumb is keeping it from falling, but gravity is pulling at it. If I let this go, it's going to fall to the ground. I can tell you that with absolute certainty. <clears throat> I'm not going to lower the camera because I'm not wearing nice shoes today and I don't want you to see them. But um, the point is, I can prove that with absolute certainty that is a scientific law. Therefore, I don't think anyone would disagree that if you have a different opinion, I can tell you you're wrong. But it's a little different with evolution because we can't prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. But is creationism just as valid as evolution? Well, evolution has a lot of evidence. There are a lot of fossils. We've also actually seen some evolution take place. Um, I've heard about fruit flies sort of changing through a few generations. Um, I am not an expert in this field by a long shot. I am not a biologist, just so we're clear. But my point is, whenever I talk to a biologist, they can present me with all kinds of evidence for evolution. Ask a creationist for their evidence. You know what they'll do? They'll start telling you all the things that are wrong with evolution. So pin them down and say, yes, yes, but what is your evidence for creationism? They won't have it, or they'll present you with the only evidence they have. I've got it right over here. This is my favorite version, the New Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible. I like this particular version because it was translated by people from all over the world of many different languages and many different faiths. So I'm hoping that this is the most objective translation of the Bible. But there are many translations and I happen to own several of them. But this here is the only piece of evidence that creationists have for their so-called theory that God created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh day, and it happened about 6,000 years ago. Well, first, the 6,000 years ago part, we can actually already prove that wrong. Carbon dating can show that there are fossils that are older than 6,000 years. So unless they want to argue that there was some kind of animal here before the creation story in the book of Genesis, then we've already proven a pretty fundamental part of their theory, their so-called theory, wrong. But aside from that, this isn't very good evidence. And if you're a Christian, please don't be offended. I'm a Christian myself. I go to church regularly. I'm Greek Orthodox. I'm a very strong believer, actually, in this book. But I believe in it in the context in which it was written. I don't believe in it in a 2000 context. I mean year 2000. You see, this idea that history needs to be told accurately, it's actually a pretty new concept. It probably started with the Romans. So about the time that the New Testament was being written, it's possible that the people writing the New Testament actually had some idea of what it means to tell history with accuracy as a science. Before that, people in the ancient world and the ancient deserts especially, they didn't tell stories accurately. They weren't even trying to as we understand it. What was important to them was the meaning what it means for their culture, and what it means for their national or tribal identity. That was far more important than getting all the historical facts straight. This here is not a scientific theory, and it is not a basis for a scientific theory. The people who wrote the book of Genesis were not scientists in lab coats and laboratories. 
and they shouldn't be treated as such. They can no more be proven right than they can be proven wrong with the limits of natural science. They were mystics. They were trying to understand something metaphysical, something otherworldly. They were trying to understand God. So the stories they tell are meant to give us deeper meanings of who we are. They're not meant to be a historical timeline. And to treat it like that is to do a great injustice to the people who wrote this Bible and the people who compiled it. So to the critical thinker, Taking this book literally, in light of scientific evidence, is really impossible at this point. As for evolution, we admit that it can't be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt, but it's the best theory we have, and it's actually the only theory we have.